Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Abid al -Badur. I'm a landscape photographer and artist based out of Dubai. My projects revolve around landscapes, documentary work and visually artistic projects mostly. And today I'm going to be hopefully showing you guys a review of Sony's new lens, the 14mm f1.8 GM lens. Man, this lens, okay, so there's a lot to talk about this lens. But before we get into that, I have a quick disclaimer to make. Sony, Middle East and I did work together to create promotional videos and content for this lens. However, my opinions on this lens uh, and feedback of it are of a completely individualistic nature and Sony has no say in my thoughts or the production of this video. But once more, I would like to thank Sony for lending me this epic lens for review and for testing for my project. So thank you. Okay, so let's get into it. My reviews are nowhere near scientific or brick wall tests, but more in my thoughts on its handling and its capabilities as a photographer and why I think a lens like this is important and if you should get one or not. But before I get into that, let me go over the features very quickly. This lens has an aperture range from 1.8 to f16. It has a declickable aperture button, which is great for video makers. You can go from super smooth apertures to the nice, and I love the sound, I come from a Fujifilm background, so I love having a clickable aperture ring. It just makes it feel, I know the word tactile is used often, but I like the thought process of creating an image with my bare hands, that every click I use feels like, yeah, this is how the image is coming to life because of it. Anyway, it has an autofocus manual focus switch on the lens. It also accepts gel filters from the back of the lens, which is super important. So you are able to attach gel filters into the back and slide them in. Which is great, it's much cheaper than getting a 150mm plus <laughs> kit, trust me. It has a programmable button like all GM lenses on the side of the lens. And most importantly to me, and I think the key feature of this lens is one, its size. Its size is incredibly small. It is as small as the 24 f1.4 GM lens, which I have recording me right now. It is just freaking amazing. I love this lens and its weight. Its weight is... I, I couldn't believe it. So when I first grabbed this lens and I picked it up, I was <laughs> I was laughing because I'm like, no way, this is a 14 mm lens, right? It weighs 457 grams. What? It's less than half a kilogram. What is this comparable to? The 24 f1.4 that I'm recording with right now is 445, yeah, 445 grams. And its closest competitor, which is the Sigma f1.8 lens, is 1170 grams. This lens is basically less than half the weight of its closest competitor, which is still like, I can't believe it. It is a joy to hold and to use. Doesn't, doesn't tire your hand out even though you have a full day of shooting. Trust me on this, it is a fantastically featured lens. With that out of the way, let's get on to practical business and the part that matters to me the most, right? What's it like shooting and the image quality involved with a lens like this? And to give you some context, uh, I love extreme focal lengths. I mean, one of the most common lenses I use is a 100 to 400 Sony lens. I'm kind of debating of, uh, trying out the 200 to 600 because I can never, I'm never satisfied with how far in I, or how far I can shoot. Um, I just really enjoy compression. And then on the wide end, I usually shoot with my 24 f1.4 because I find it's a, it's a sweet spot. Occasionally, I'd use a Tamron 17 to 28 for my wide angle needs um, if I need the flexibility. But this lens, this this lens, this lens is completely different and why? So you have to be, once you're at like 14 mm, you have to be so much more intentional about what you shoot because the perspective change is so extreme. It's very difficult to kind of accommodate that or to acclimatize to that kind of field of view. I see the world in like 600 to 400 mm. I also see the world in 24. So if there's a seat in front of me, I know without a doubt, if I have any of those two lenses, I can get a 10 out of 10 shot. But it, this lens really does push my creative mind to its limits, um, especially that I have not had this kind of creative push in, in a change in perspective in quite some time. To put this, in, you know, just so you guys can relate to the subject matter, if you guys have ever shot with a 50 mm lens for the first time using a standard prime, it really changes the way you look at things and the way you shoot. I'd say this is also really similar in that perspective where it offers a very, um, inflexible focal range with an extremely wide uh, and you know within the range of distortion it does distort things quite a bit i mean things in the background get pushed really far out and it's really small 
but that does push me to kind of compose things better and to see what I can make out of this lens. And I love that process with this lens, more so than a lot of other lenses I've tried um, in the past couple of years. And what I do love about this lens is the ability to shoot subject matter quite close, but still retaining a lot of the background information and detail. And just to give you guys some perspective of how I'm shooting with this lens, this is a scene I got. I have these bushes in front of me. I'm not even like literally, I can almost extend my hand and reach them. And uh, there's some bushes here on the left. And over here we have the lovely model tree. The Milky Way is behind it. Shooting vertically. I'm sad I didn't get my L bracket. Um, just one part of it. I'm able to get this frame, which looks pretty cool. Assalamu alaikum everybody. A bit from the past here. You guys can tell I'm on top of the Adras Hotel right now. Um, on the rooftop shooting Burj Khalifa behind me. And I have to shoot both photo and video. I have my A7S III up there docked, kind of shooting a specific scene that the client has asked for. And I'm very, I'm very happy um, that I have this lens. And I'll tell you why, it really came in clutch. If you guys can see, there is really, the, the roof of this area is quite narrow, or it's uh, quite low, sorry. And then there's this ledge in front of me. And I have my other, like, you know, technically wide angle lenses. I have my um, 24, uh, uh, f1.4 GM lens and I really couldn't get the shot unless I was really shooting it vertically head-on and I, I had any barely any room to crop the top of the bottom now with a 14 mm man this ugh, I can't explain I'm just gonna show you guys the photos to explain the difference in perspective um, this is a situation where I could not move farther back if I wanted to because this is gonna block the way and I wanted to make the most of the situation that I could um, it's really tough in situations like these and I see why having a lens like this is completely like, indispensable like I can't wait to pick one up for myself um, and that's just for a moment like this because now I can really just perform for the clients and in very tight narrow situations that require low light capabilities and uh, not a lot of space to work with but I was very happy that this lens was able to deliver and still kind of give what my creative mind was pursuing and trying to create that into reality once I get this lens I'll be very happy taking on architecture based jobs uh, and I'm very confident in the kind of images I can produce with it so the conclusion, why, why would you buy this lens? Personally, I'm really looking forward to buying this lens once it's out on the market. I have to return it today, unfortunately. Um, but once it's out, I'm gonna go for it without a doubt in my mind. There's three specific reasons. One, it's extremely lightweight and extremely small for the punch it delivers. And this is a huge concern for me because I've had recent back issues uh, and back problems and now the overall weight of my camera bag is a huge factor in what I pack and prepare for my projects and my assignments. The second important thing is that this lens is a very unique. It's ultra wide and it's ultra bright, which is not what you get with a lot of different lenses. There's trade-offs, 2.8 is great, but for me, as a person who loves astrophotography and astrophotography season is upon us, it is unbeatable in terms of what I could produce with this lens. Plus, if any of you guys have shot the astrophotography before, you know capturing the Milky Way in one frame is a very difficult thing to do, to have everything in as wide as you want. So the wider the better for that purpose, in my opinion. The third thing that's really pushing me to buy this lens reinvigorated my, my creative mind and challenged me uh, in a way that I have not been challenged in quite some time. Very rarely do lenses like this come across that really push me and push the envelope forward. And I think this ultimately is going to lead me to think more and harder and understand a whole different perspective than what I was used to. And ultimately enhance my skill as a photographer in terms of the compositions I can create and uh, pushing the boundaries of my technical capabilities on field. So this is one of those lenses for me. I hope you found this creative review helpful. And if you think otherwise, please let me know down in the comments below. So the more we talk about creative perspectives, the better it can help us grow and see things differently and maybe help us achieve the next step in our creative career. And if you thought this video was useful in any way, please press the like button and consider subscribing. These things go a long way and helps push me to create more videos like this and share my thoughts with you guys. And that's all and see you in the next video. Bye bye. Sometimes we get to shoot cool projects, <laughs> cool places.
one of my favorite things in the world is shooting astro for those who do not know astrophotography shooting the stars and the moon and elements that pertain to such things and the real reason why I love it is because one it gives me a good reason to go to really far places that most people wouldn't even think about two it makes me have to like trust in the process and in the skill and the research we have to kind of make happen before we go there and three when you press the shutter button it takes um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with like night mode so it takes some time for uh, for the image to appear right your phone sometimes gets be 3 seconds 10 seconds for me it's the same 15 30 and uh, it's usually in a tripod and there's nothing I can do but just sit and watch and wait I have to just look up and 